So Jesus warned us to be aware of the signs and to understand them. He said, I don't know how many of you have heard this. It, it, it depends on what version you're reading. But it, he said, occupy until he returns. And you know what that means? To me, that means steward your salvation. Tell it to other people. Don't cap it off. Don't hide it for you, but share it to other people. That's just one of the things. We're to remain steadfast in prayer and be aware of those who say they are something that they are not. Wolves in sheep clothing, false prophets, false teachers. They're everywhere. They're all around us. There's so many versions of the scriptures in the nations that a new convert could hardly know what is true and what is, what is not true. They, they really would have a hard time. I had somebody go to a, a uh, encounter experience a couple years ago. This person had been in my class, and they had been, they went to another state to see this particular person. And I said, do you know about that person? And have you heard about that person? Like, do you know their history? And the response floored me because the response was, I don't really care. There were signs and wonders. Now, for you that know the word of God, you know that should be scary. Because signs and wonders should follow you. You not follow them. If you're following for signs and wonders, you could get in really big trouble. Because Satan can do signs and wonders. And if we don't believe that, go read the book of Genesis. Go read about the sorcerers in the book of Acts. He can do signs. He can do wonders. And go read Revelation. He can do things. I'm going to talk about that on Tuesday to help the church be empowered about who Satan is, what he can do, and how we win. Amen? So we don't glorify him, but we got to recognize who our opponent is. Before I read these scriptures, and our, our major scripture tonight is going to be Matthew 5, 3 through 12. And I want to give you this little thing to carry around with you. But this was something that um, I actually read this in a Smith Wigglesworth devotional. And it just kind of caught some fire on me. But it, it, he said, a repentant and demolished and impoverished spirit. Impoverished spirit brings revival. And it just quickened in me. Because an impoverished, immediately, I don't know, obviously the Lord was putting it together. He gave me these scriptures to go with that. Impoverished is a poor spirit, one that will inherit the kingdom of God. That's what the word means, impoverished. So a poor spirit. But let's look at what a poor spirit is. It starts at verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit. It's coming from Jesus. So he says, blessed are the poor in the spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Verse 8, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who, pers who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. After Jesus preached this message, he then went on. I mean, he was teaching people how you're going to inherit the kingdom of God. Where, how do you get in salvation? What's, what, what fruit will you produce? This is, and he's, I want you to know, if you don't understand the word of God, almost every scripture in the New Testament has come out of the Old Testament, including this sermon. Jesus' sermon came out of mostly the Psalms. And I didn't know that. I started just feeling the Lord press, 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 press. Because one thing that has come against the body of Christ for so many years is this statement. That's the Old Testament. And I know people who love the word of God hate that statement. You bet you it's the Old Testament. They run together. Without the Old Testament, you can't have the new one, right? Without the Old Covenant, you don't need the New Covenant. So this mindset that we have has weakened our, our ability to receive truth about sin. See, so we've erased the holy, righteous requirements. But Jesus said, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. This is the season to, to hunger and thirst for righteousness, to, to be in prayer, to be in worship, the time for a house of prayers and house of worship to raise up. Why? Because we need to stop making it about us. It isn't about us. It'll be all about us when we get out of here. Amen. One day, it'll be all about us and all about God. But right now, it's all about the kingdom of God, his will being done, as they sang, here on earth as it is in heaven. 
And anything inside of you that does not agree with that statement, bind it and loose heaven inside of yourself because we have that, that power and authority. But after Jesus taught this message, he said to those that were following him that they were the salt of the earth. And he said, if the salt, I never really understood that scripture for a really long time. We go back to it over and over. What are you talking about? Salt. Salt, when it loses, it's a preserver. So when it loses its saltiness, it's got nothing left to preserve. We are here for a duty and a job. We're here to glorify God. We're here to, you know, to bring glory to his name through our lives, right? Through everything that we do. Salt is a preserver, and we're here to preserve the word of God, the message of the gospel. That's why it has stuck around for so long, because the disciples have preserved it. They have passed it. It was so important to the, uh, to the patriarchs of the Old Testament that they put it in jars of clay, that they put it in places where it would be found later. You, you all have heard of Dead Sea Scrolls. We have this written word of God on top of the word of God that became flesh because it's been preserved through people like you. So remaining steadfast in holiness to the one who will eventually raise us to be in eternity with him. Until then, we are useless if we do not make a difference in the world. I really feel that way in my own life. I'm not trying to criticize anybody, but a kingdom-minded person that follows after Jesus is more powerful than 10,000 seat warmers. Amen? As a light, we are to shine even in times of darkness, actually more in times of darkness. You are needed. One of the things I always encourage this house is you, you are needed. You are needed because there are disabled, spiritually disabled people in this world. You may be the only opportunity they ever have to hear the name of Jesus. 